Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Beast Belly channel. And today, we're going to be going over some games in week eight of college football. Uh, these are some week eight matchups. These are not just the SEC games, but I want to go over some more of the other conferences and kind of go over some interesting matchups we got this week. Uh, not a very... Uh, not a not a great week for football. Not there's no ranked versus ranked games. There's uh not too many good ones. So there's a couple games that caught my eye, and I'm gonna particularly go into those games. Um, in this video, I'm gonna, I got four games outside the SEC that I'm gonna dive into, and I kind of give my thoughts on them because the spreads are kind of interesting in these games, and uh. Yeah, there's some uh, could be some controversy with these games as well. Um, these are potential upsets that could be in the making this Saturday. Uh, a couple undefeated teams not favored in their games they're playing. They're ranked high, so let's dive into it. The first game I want to discuss is uh, 16 ranked Wake Forest. The trees, wherever they are, the the, the wherever they are, the, the trees, the woods. I don't know. I don't know what their mascot is. It's some crazy, the Dominion Woods. I don't know what their, their mascot is, but Wake Forest at Army. Um, Army is four and two, and Wake Forest is six and zero. Oh. Wake Forest, the only undefe undefeated uh, ACC team. Wake Forest is um, they're I mean, they're undefeated, but. They're 16th in the the AP poll. They're not giving them a lot of love. They don't have. I don't think they have any ranked wins. And that's probably the reason why. Um, Wake Forest will probably more than likely play in the ACC championship game, which is exciting for them, obviously. Um, because let's be honest, if you're in the ACC this year, Clemson's having a bad year. You need to take advantage of this because Clemson has won the last six ACC championships. I mean, come on, take advantage of it. If you're in the ACC, if you're a coach and your team is, you know, mediocre, okay at best, can go eight and four, nine and three at best, look, take advantage of this opportunity. Try to go play and win the ACC this year. Clemson's having a down year. You got to take advantage of that because Clemson has absolutely dominated the ACC the past uh, six, seven years. And you got to really take advantage of that because they're having such a bad year. Um, so Wake Forest is doing that. They're six and oh. Um, I don't know if they play Clemson, though. I, don't, I haven't looked at their schedule. I don't know if they play Clemson. But they do. They're probably going to beat Clemson. Um, Clemson, I don't even think it's going to play for the ACC title. I think they're like fourth in their division. But uh, Wake Forest, that Army. Uh, Wake Forest only favored by three points against Army. Um, this could be an upset. Uh, Wake Forest, you know, I don't know what their plans and aspirations are uh, for the college football season. I don't know if they have plans. Outside of the ACC, maybe uh, make a New Year's Six Bowl, which is possible. They, I mean, if you go, if they go twelve and zero, and win the ACC thirteen and zero, um, yeah, so I might say, hey, put them in the playoff. Uh, is Wake Forest a playoff contender? My personal opinion, no. But when you're thirteen and zero, you got to have some kind of recognition because it's really hard to go undefeated in college football. It's really hard to go twelve and zero. And they're all they're halfway there. So um this game's I think this is probably a good game. Um, you know Army, you know how Army plays. They uh, it's, it's it's hard to say. Um Army could win this game. Wake Forest hasn't really shown me nothing to say that they're a team that could compete with a good team. But um I can see this game going either way. I can't. I, I'm not – that 6-0 beside Wake Forest's uh, team name is nothing for me. That that 6-0, um, it's hard to say. I mean, it really is. It, it's hard. How, you can't really predict in a game like this because Army – if it was at Wake Forest, I'd probably go at Wake Forest. But Army, I just got a feeling they're going to win the game. I do. I just think they're going to win. Um they, they're a good team. Um, they can compete. And so we'll just have to see. We will just have to see. 
Um, I'm probably going to say Wake Forest comes out on top, but don't be surprised this game is close or goes to overtime. Um, next up, this one This one actually surprised me. I, number eight, Oklahoma State at Iowa State. And Iowa State is favored by seven over an undefeated 6-0, and oh, number eight, eighth ranked Oklahoma State and unranked 4-2 and two Iowa State is favored. Uh, this We've seen this happen already this year where a team was ranked, was not favored versus an unranked opponent, um, and they were highly ranked. Um, we've already seen it this year. I've already seen these spreads like this. It's crazy. Look, Oklahoma State um, – was about to lose to Texas. Texas blew two leads over two Oklahoma teams back to back weeks. Um, I don't know, man. I Iowa State. They're not what people thought they were going to be. I I think Oklahoma State's going to win, but it's on the road, and that 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 really makes it rough for them. But I. These games are just 50-50 ball games to me. I mean, Vegas sees it that way too. Vegas is favoring Iowa State. Um, Man, I, I think Oklahoma State's going to come out on top. But again, do not be surprised that this game is close. Uh, it could be tied in the fourth quarter. Um, Don't be, don't be surprised. Um, yeah, just don't. Just, just don't be surprised, man. It's just, it's been a crazy year for football, and uh, yeah, it's. We'll just have to see what happens. I, I think Oklahoma State. I think they're just gonna, just I think they're gonna wear them down. I think Oklahoma State's just gonna keep grinding the pound and uh, just play true what they football they play. I just that's what I think is gonna happen. I think Oklahoma State's probably gonna win a close one, and they'll stay undefeated. And Oklahoma State. And I'm going to make a bold prediction. Um, like I said, it is so hard to go undefeated in college football to go 12-0 and in the regular season. It's really hard to do that. And you really have to be a good football team. you got to be a consistent football team. And you have to play consistently every single week, all four quarters. You have to be on your top level to go 12-0. and because it's it is you know it's it is hard to go eleven and one. I mean, but there's it, it gives you that room for one game you can kind of drop. But for Oklahoma State, you know Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are both undefeated. Oklahoma seven and zero, Oklahoma State six and zero. These two teams are going to meet in week twelve, uh, the final week of the season. They're going to meet. Now, are these two teams going to be eleven and zero when they meet? That's a possibility. Nobody's talking about it, but that literally, those two teams are the top two teams in the Big 12. And guess what? They're going to play each other on the last week of the season, and they're going to replay each other in, the, in December for the Big 12 championship. These two teams are going to play twice. So my best bet is whoever wins the first game is going to lose the rematch, and because that's usually how it goes. Um. Let's say Oklahoma State wins by a field goal. Let's say it's fifty nine to fifty six. They beat Oklahoma. Um, the, the 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 playoff poll will probably put Oklahoma State in the top four. And then so it'll be twelve and zero. But then Oklahoma will probably win the rematch and vice versa. Um, we'll find out. We'll find out. Oklahoma um, has Oklahoma's playing better football with uh, Spencer Rattler and him getting benched and Caleb Williams coming in. They're playing a lot better. Um, he finally pulled a Nick Saban move and uh, put the better quarterback in. But, uh, yeah, Oklahoma, play them good. Um, uh, man, Oklahoma State, wow. Um, I don't know. I'm excited about that because, you know, that's what I look at. I look at the potential games at the end of the year because the month of November, I'm telling you, Excuse me. The, uh, <coughs> All right. The month of November is 
going to be one heck of a month of football. I'm telling you, November is going to absolutely shock uh, football this season. Now, there's some teams that aren't playing no more ranked games, like Georgia, for instance. There's no more ranked teams on the schedule. Florida was ranked. We, Florida was going to be the last one. We went through a gauntlet of ranked teams in the month of October. Arkansas defeated. Auburn defeated. Kentucky took care of business. Then we have Florida. Florida was ranked all year up until they lost to the Tigers. Lost to the Tigers. And Odron, go Tigers. <laughs> They lost to that guy two years in a row, and they fired him. Well, I guess when you beat Florida by seven, you get fired. Um, yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited about this this month of November. Uh, we still got two more weeks in October, though. I'm just looking down. I'm just looking at the end of the year because there's a lot of games that are going to be huge. Uh, Big Ten East. The Big Ten East is just a gauntlet getting ready to happen. Um, Penn State's going to play Ohio State. Ohio State's going to play Michigan. Michigan and Penn State got to play. Uh, Michigan State's got to play all these teams. I mean, these teams that are undefeated, Michigan and uh, Michigan and Michigan State's the only two teams undefeated in the Big Ten East. Ohio State's got a loss. Penn State's got a loss. Now, Ohio State's is in a conference loss. They have a non-con loss. Penn State, however, has that one conference loss to Iowa, who just got shell shocked by something called a boiler maker last week, and uh, that loss unexplainable. But congratulations to Purdue, though they're ranked twenty fifth. How long that last? What's how long that last? Um, yeah, I, man, so many. Uh, so many good games left to go in, in the college football. Um, but, yeah, um, back to the o Oklahoma State, Iowa State. Uh, give me Oklahoma State. They're probably going to win that game. Next on the list, we got some Pac-12 football. Uh, we got number 10 ranked Oregon. Losses, UCLA. It's at UCLA. And... Uh, UCLA is favored by two and a half points. Two and a half. Oh, boy. Uh, UCLA. The same team that beat the Tigers in week one. Oh, them Tigers. I beat them Tigers. Um, UCLA is five and two. Oregon's five and one. You know, Oregon Oregon is a good team. They're not an elite team or a great team. They're a good team. UCLA is a good team. Um, I can see USA you I can see UCLA win this game. I can see it happening. Um Oregon is just kinda they kind of flow in a limbo right now for me. They almost lost to California. They've had some close games. <sighs> Oregon <sighs> And I, I hate it for him because I wanted to see Oregon make the playoff this year. I wanted it. I wanted the Pac-12 to finally get over that hump and make the playoff again. Um, it's been a while. I think Washington was the last team to do it um, a couple of years back. I think it was 2017. Washington went. But, uh, man, I wanted Oregon to make the playoff. But it's not going to happen. That one loss to uh, Stanford <laughs> – yeah, that takes that, that, that ain't gonna happen. And you're probably gonna drop this game. Now, if Oregon wins this game, I'll be happy for them, and that's great. They'll continue on. But even if Oregon were to go eleven and one, win the Pac twelve, twelve and one, a twelve and one Oregon Pac twelve champ, not making the playoff. Sorry. They should not have dropped to Stanford. If you were thirteen and zero, I would say go to the playoff. It is playoff time for Oregon. But nope. You can't. I, I just can't do it because I, I. If I was on the committee, I'm looking at it this way: Oregon, you already playing in probably the worst Power Five conference. Now I will say this: the ACC and the Pac-12 is about similar this year for for Power Five wise. I mean they're they're pretty similar. The two best Power Five conferences right now is the Big Ten and the SEC. They each have six teams ranked. Uh, Purdue gave them the tie. Congratulations, Purdue. 
He gave uh, the Big Ten a tie to tie it up with the SEC for teams ranked. So he came in sick. Uh, he came in 25th, and that gave them a six team ranked. Wee! But, uh, yep. It's most of the Big Ten East. Man, what a, that Big Ten East, about as good as the SEC West. Um, yep. Clemson. Uh, oh, moving ahead. But um, I think I think Oregon's going to win this game. Close. I think it's going to be a close win. Probably field goal, two points, something like that. Um, but don't be surprised if UCLA wins. I'm not a betting man. I can't. It's hard to pick these games because that's why I picked these because these were such. These are games that are 50 50 games. And that is why I went. I, pick, I hand select these out to talk about them. But it just. I, I just don't know. I mean, Oregon can throw the ball. Oregon can run the ball. Verdell, phenomenal running back. Um, I haven't watched much of UCLA this year. Um, I know they beat LSU, which ain't hard to do. Um, I, 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 man, all three of these ranked teams I've mentioned are probably going could lose this Saturday. Could easily lose. I don't know. Give me Oregon. I, th- I just think I just think I think all three of these games are gonna be close. Um, don't be surprised if none of these teams are leading at halftime, but it, it's gonna be close. I think all three of these teams will win. Uh, now this game, I feel pretty confident in picking a winner um, in this game. That is Clemson at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is ranked twenty third. Pittsburgh is five and one. They're the second best team in the ACC, and Clemson's four and two. Clemson has man. Clemson's got to be the biggest disappointment of college football this year. But uh, Georgia beat them 10-3 to in week one. And ever since that loss to Georgia, uh, DJ Ugandale just hasn't been the same. Uh, he couldn't do nothing against Georgia, and he hasn't been able to do nothing against anybody else except for South Carolina State or whatever they was they played that beat them like 60-something to nothing. Um. I I'm, I'm pretty confident in picking uh I believe uh I'm I believe Pittsburgh's going to win this game. I'm pretty confident in that selection. I think Pittsburgh's going to take the W. Um Pittsburgh is just playing so much better than Clemson is. Clemson beat uh They almost lost to Syracuse. Uh Syracuse about beat them. Uh, it's like 17 to 14 final score. So yeah, I, I'm I'm going with Pittsburgh. I think Clemson's going to drop the third game. And my prediction is Clemson will Clemson will probably finish eight and four or nine and three. That that will probably be the record. But if they if they went seven and five, I would kind of be like, okay, that we got a problem now. Clemson's got a real problem if they go seven and five. Oh yeah, um, and that's really the four games I wanted to talk about. And college game day is going to be at the Oregon UCLA game. What a bummer! But um. The one SEC game I wanted to talk about was Tennessee at Alabama. Um, Tennessee is four and two. Or excuse me, no. Yeah, Tennessee's four and two. Alabama six and one. Alabama's ranked fourth. Alabama's a twenty-four and a half point favorite. Um, that's probably what's going to happen. Probably what's going to happen. But Tennessee is a team. Tennessee. If they can get out early and get up early, if Tennessee can play ahead of them and they if they can be consistent, Tennessee has a shot at this game. Now, is Tennessee going to win this game? I'm 89.99,000% sure Tennessee is not going to win this game. But I will say this about Tennessee. I believe they can give Bama a little scare and we'll see. You know, I, I, I've talked about the Tennessee, uh, I've talked about Tennessee's, um, passing game, how it can be a threat. Uh, Tennessee can run the football, um, hand in hooker. Um, obviously he's not Bryce Young, but I believe this guy can play. And so I, I, I believe Tennessee can hang with him for a little bit. But Alabama's probably going to cover that spread. It's probably going to be covered easily. They're going to spread it like butter out there on that field. Um, 
And that's really the only games I really want to kind of talk about. This today, Sun, uh, today's Monday, actually. Yeah, today's Monday, so week eight college football has started, and Georgia's off on the bye week. Georgia's got Florida coming up next Saturday on October thirtieth. <sighs> Man, who's ready for that Georgia Florida game? I am. I've been waiting. I've been waiting for this game since the fourth quarter ended last year. When we lost 44 to 28. Um, two weeks, we get a bye week, prepare for Florida. And the greatest thing about the bye week is, you know, it's always a bye week before the Florida game. But the bye week this year actually works in our favor tremendously because we have so many injured players on the offense that some of them have not even seen the field this year. George Pickens, Dominic Blaylock, them two guys. Hadn't seen the field, period. Kyrus Jackson plays like 10% of the games. He, he's playing punts and put him in a receiver. He might get one catch a game. Um, and also something, Arian Smith, Jermaine Burton. All five of them wide receivers are starters. All five of them. And they have not played. And they have not played. It, they played it. I'd say they played 15% of the downs we played this year. 15% of all six games. Georgia's offense has come from all true freshmen and a walk-on backup quarterback named Stetson freaking Bennett. Because JT's, JT's been battling a lat injury and uh, a chest injury. and You know, a lot of Georgia fans say that we need JT for the Florida game. We don't need JT for the Florida game. We don't. Florida is down and out. Now, they go, now they're going to give up and let us just do what we want? No. Florida's going to battle. Florida, Florida's only goal for the rest of this entire football season is to beat Georgia because it's a rivalry game, but also Georgia's number one in the country. And I'm telling you, Florida's going to want that bragging right. They said, hey, we beat y'all when y'all were number one. And, you know, we're having a bad year. But uh, I just don't see it happening. Um, Florida better be hoping that Georgia will come out there and hang 50 on them. But I know that's not going to happen. I know that's not going to happen. Um, I've been watching Georgia football for almost 11 years. And one thing I know about Georgia football is we play conservative and respectful. And we don't usually hang up a lot of points like that. Like when we put 63 on Vandy, I was shocked we even got to the 60s because usually we stop in the 50s. I mean, that's usually like the, okay, guess cap off point. Let's just run the clock out. It don't matter if there's 12 minutes left in the fourth quarter. We're going to run the ball for 12 minutes in the fourth quarter. And we're going to run the clock out, take a knee and go home. Uh, we're not going to try to score, but uh, Vandy pulled a stunt last year, um, canceled senior night because of COVID. Um, we all know they don't want to play us, but – when we, we we made sure we let them know we did that for the seniors. They score. They did that for the seniors, and Kentucky better hope uh, they don't get sixty score them next year for pulling a stunt they did uh, a couple of days ago. But I don't know. Oh, I don't. It, it's kind of a down week. There's not really any good games except for the ones I mentioned. Um, since it's been such a crazy week of college football, a uh, crazy year. I mean, not week year. Don't be surprised if some ranked teams go down uh, Saturday. It's happening every week. There's been 47 ranked teams to lose this season. Man, that's, that's crazy. 47 teams. Um, Texas, Texas has like two of those, don't they? Yeah, Texas lost twice while ranked. And Florida... Florida has lost three times while ranked. Boy. Oh. Mm. Man, uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good week for some of these games. Um, can Clemson beat Pitt? If Clemson, if Clemson can beat Pittsburgh, it will be an upset, and it would also be Clemson's best win of the year. Um, Oregon at UCLA. Uh, you know, in uh, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and Wake Forest at Army. Uh, Wake Forest, Wake Forest, not getting a whole lot of love. They're hanging 16th, undefeated. Um, 
probably not gonna make the playoff. Uh, the 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 coaches poll and AP polls not not really showing them nothing. It'll be interesting though when that first playoff poll comes out. I believe it's what the first week of November that those come out. That's gonna be interesting. It's those those polls are gonna really show who they who the people really think is uh, worthy of being in the top ten. You know. Are they going to keep Cincinnati where they're at? They're going to drop Cincinnati like sixth or seventh, and I'm I'm afraid that might be what happens because um, I have a feeling that Cincinnati's probably going to get dunked uh, dunked a couple points, and um, Oklahoma they're probably going to I don't know Oklahoma they're probably going to stay I don't know Oklahoma Cincinnati both only played one ranked game, and they both won them pretty low uh, pretty um, close games. Oklahoma gave up 50-something points to Texas. Cincinnati gave up 13 to Notre Dame. So you you tell me, what was the better win? And that's Cincinnati. Cincinnati has the better win when if you want to compare Oklahoma and Cincinnati for two, being the number two spot. Um, And, you know, people say, is Cincinnati really the number two team in the country? I don't know. We ain't going to find out, though, until uh, – we ain't going to find out until the postseason if they are because I, I think Cincinnati is going 12-0. They were under they were undefeated last year until until they played Georgia in the Peach Bowl. Georgia beat them in the Peach Bowl, and that game was close. Georgia hit that uh, fifty yard game uh, game winning field goal and or game leading field goal with like two seconds left, and we got a safety and that sealed it up because they uh, the kickoff returners bobbled it up a little bit and ended up being on the one yard line. Desmond Ritter dropped back in the end zone. Hey, as he's old, all right, got him. But I don't know. Cincinnati, are they number two? A lot of people thought Iowa was number two till they dropped to the Boilermakers. But I don't know. Man, it's good. Mm. I might make a top 10 video or a top 25 video. Might just do top 10 and just kind of give you guys my thoughts on who I think truly is the top 10 in college football right now. And uh, so, yeah, we'll see. But, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me any comments down below what you think about the games this week. Um, I might make a separate video to talk about the SEC games. They're not really that good, though. Um, there's not really nothing important to talk about. But y'all just leave a comment down below. Peace.